Welcome to this video series, produced as a part of the subject Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS at the Australian National University. My name is David Summers. This series of videos will take a look at optical remote sensing, and in this initial video will take a look at the principles of optical remote sensing. Optical remote sensing is a passive form of remote sensing, so the, the sensor that records the, uh, the information does not emit the radiation itself. Uh, typically, the source of radiation for passive remote sensing is the sun. This emits an enormous amount of radiation uh, and it travels to the target surface from the sun where it's reflected back to a sensor which records the reflected radiation as information. You can see that in this diagram here. The sun is the source of the, the radiation. It travels down through the atmosphere. Uh, will interact with the various um, materials that are found on the target surface and then reflect back uh, to, the, to the sensor, in this case a satellite, but it could also be a, uh, an airborne instrument or even a handheld camera. Much of the technical theory of optical remote sensing can be described with Planck's law. This describes the relationship between the emissivity, or the amount of energy emitted by an object, the temperature of that object and the wavelength of the radiation that's emitted. So this diagram has spectral radiant emittance on the y-axis, that's the amount of energy emitted, wavelength of the radiation on the x-axis, and the black lines describe the temperature of the body that's emitting the radiation. The sun, with a very high surface temperature of 6,000 degrees Kelvin, emits a maximum radiation with a maximum wavelength of around 0.5 micrometers, whereas the Earth's surface, with a maximum temperature with a surface temperature of around 300 degrees Kelvin, emits radiation with a maximum wavelength of around 10 micrometers, mm. which is in the range that we call um, the, inf the thermal infrared. In the middle, there's uh, an incandescent lamp with a surface temperature of 3,000 degrees Kelvin, and this has a maximum uh, wave. This emits radiation with a maximum wavelength of around 1, 1.2 micrometers. So while I said earlier that the Sun is the main source of radiation for optical remote sensing, there are some exceptions to this. For example, an incandescent lamp can be used as a source of energy for optical remote sensing, and so can radiation from the Earth's uh, surface be used as a source of optical remote sense, uh, radiation for optical remote sensing. And similarly, energy from a fire or energy from body heat can be used as a source of radiation for optical remote sensing. And so here's an example of another source of uh, radiation being used um, in optical remote sensing. This is uh, image data collected from a satellite. The, the imagery is collected at night, so obviously there's no sun to provide the radiation. And this imagery is collecting uh, artificial light uh, in urban centres around the world. Another example is this thermal infrared imagery that was used to map bushfires in the landscape. So having talked about um, uh, optical remote sensing and, and the radiation that's used in, as an energy source in optical remote sensing, I thought we should touch briefly on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is, makes up all of these forms of radiation, whatever their source. Obviously, we're familiar with uh, visible light. We rely on it to see. It's, uh, uh, where most people are familiar that white light is made up of constituent parts of different wavelengths of light. So the short wavelength visible light is, is blue um, through the different colours to red uh, light, which is a longer wavelength. But they're all in the range, the visible light range, that we can use uh, to see. But the electromagnetic spectrum continues either side of visible light from gamma radiation with very, very small wavelengths and a very, very high energy through X-ray and ultraviolet light and then on the other side of visible, infrared, microwave and radio um, ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum all with higher, uh, larger wavelengths and with increasingly less energy. So... Um, the important thing to know is that these are all part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and uh, which is a continuum, and we harvest a portion of this, uh, this spectrum, 
including visible light, but also on either side of visible light as a part of optical remote sensing. And we can use these different wavelengths for different applications. But in optical remote sensing, the regions that we're most interested in are ultraviolet, visible, near-infrared and thermal-infrared radiation. So I just thought I'd give some examples of different applications of the other wavelengths of radiation beside from visible light so that everyone's familiar with them. In the top left, for example, there's an image, a thermal image of the sun showing that the sun has, there are places on the sun that are hotter than others. There are in fact relatively cool places as demonstrated by the dark patches and hot places as demonstrated by the bright red and orange places. Obviously, uh, the image on the bottom left shows a hairdryer emitting a lot of heat. The image of the, the puppy shows that there's hot places around the eyeballs and the mouth where it's radiating more thermal energy. There's the contrast between the reptile, the, the relatively low body temperature of the reptile and the high body temperature of the mammal, the, man, the hand holding the, the reptile. And also the, um, the penguin uh, on an ice pack with the relative temperatures between the ice that it's standing on and its body temperature, which is comparatively warm. And this is ultraviolet light. And uh, so there's a, just by way of an example, ultraviolet light's emitted from certain types of welding. It's also emitted in tanning salons. And interestingly, even though we can't see it, it's also emitted in, or it's also used in nature. So for example, this the photo of the flower on the right demonstrates um, how an insect who can see in ultraviolet might perceive the patterns on a on a flower different to how we see them. And so I think I mean I think most of us are familiar with these images, but it's just to bring home the point that this is this radiation exists and all we're doing is harvesting it in a way that's useful to us even though we can't actually see it with our naked eyes. And so again just to reiterate that what we're doing is um, uh, exploiting the electromagnetic spectrum and a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that's included in optical remote sensing. And so this covers the range from ultraviolet light at about 0.1 micrometers through to the thermal infrared uh, at around 100, 110 micrometers. And within that, there's visible light that we can see and there is also different sources of radiation, most of which comes from the sun, but there's also uh, that emitted by the Earth, and as we saw in the previous couple of slides, there's other sources of these types of radiation as well. And within optical remote sensing, we exploit these to record information about our target material. So I hope this has been a useful introduction to optical remote sensing and what's involved. In the next video, we'll look at image formation and how this radiation is used to capture images uh, from different types of sensors.